Boom! Shake the room, Fire Nation. JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like Being Boss. Today, we'll be focusing on how my guest made eight figures in four years sharing her personal story to drop these value bombs. I have brought Sunny Leonard Doozy to rock the mic. She is a social media consultant, business growth coach, and philanthropist who helps experts turn their experience into six and seven figure empires using video marketing. And today, Fire Nation, we'll talk about how realistic it actually is to share your personal story to increase your income. What parts of your story should you share? We'll talk about a terrifying experience Sunny had while on vacation that literally transformed her business, how you can do more by doing less, some easy ways to increase your subscribers and leveling up your generosity, and so much more, Fire Nation, when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Schedule your free consultation today with Clay Clark, a former Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year at thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Your expertise is unique and your online courses should be too. So build it your way with Thinkific. Introducing the first app store for online course creators on Thinkific. Sign up for your free trial of Thinkific at thinkific.com slash fire free. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-F-I-C dot com slash fire free. Sunny, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something that you believe about becoming successful that most people disagree with. Ooh, hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. This is so exciting. So I would say that the biggest thing that most probably, most people disagree with me on is that you have to constantly be breaking your back to be successful. I find there's a tipping point once you get out of that sort of initial hustle and grind phase where it's actually better to do less and it'll make you more productive. And Fire Nation, we're actually going to be diving into that specific topic later in this interview. So stick around because we have a lot of awesome stuff when we go over how Sunny made eight figures in four years sharing her personal story. So let's just first off talk about, is this even realistic for entrepreneurs to share their personal story and actually generate significant revenue? Absolutely. And I really do think regardless of the type of business that you're going into, if you looked at some of the biggest businesses in the world and some of the most well-known CEOs, oftentimes the business is centered around a problem that they wanted to solve for themselves or that they have solved for themselves. And their clients and consumers are mirrors for them. And so not only is it possible, but I see proof of it every single day. So I was able to do it with my own story and build an online course business around it. But I've now helped people who have the most unique stories and most niche stories be able to take that and scale it into a real profitable business. I have one woman who was a very insecure and awkward teenager and hated going to any social setting or dance party because she just felt super uncomfortable and was a wallflower. And she's now built an entire business around teaching adults how to dance in social settings. And during COVID, she launched her business during COVID and she's generated $100,000 in nine months with this online program that she has. And she's impacting people on such a deep level because it's not just about learning how to dance. It's about being confident and not making up excuses to not get on the dance floor with your wife or your husband at weddings or at parties. So I've seen it firsthand on so many occasions that I absolutely know that your story is a vital piece of how your business can grow, but also it's a vital piece of why people want to do business with you. We're not in the era anymore of people buying from logos or necessarily these big corporate conglomerates. They're wanting to buy from a no like and trust factor and feeling relatability and humanizing a brand and nothing humanizes you more than your own story. A deeper meaning. Like I love that part, Fire Nation. Like I love when Sunny talked about how it's not just about like dancing or this stuff, but it's about the confidence to get on that dance floor and actually shake that booty and, you know, look somebody <laughs> in the eye and say, yo, these hips don't lie. And like exactly. when you were talking, Sunny, about that, by the way, like the person that came up for me was Elon Musk. Like here's a person 
who is, you know, just this person that's, he's willing to tweet anything. Like he's just out there, he's, he's making a stance and he kind of now has this like pack of rebel followers. Like to own a Tesla is kind of almost like, I'm kind of like Elon Musk. Like I, I like to break the rules. Like I like to be a rebel and, and people kind of resonate with that. It's not a logo anymore all the time, Fire Nation. I think this is some really interesting things. And one thing, Sonny, about my audience is that they love specifics. So what specifically do you do to find the interesting parts of your personal story to share? What is the sunny process? Yeah, there's a couple of questions to really help you get to the root of it. Uh, And this truthfully is the first step to understanding your niche, which I think a lot of people struggle with in the beginning. And oftentimes what I see is that it's because you're looking externally. You're looking at what other people have done and thinking, oh, well, if they've been successful, I can be successful doing that. But it has to be really unique to you. And oftentimes it's going to come internally. So what's the hardest thing you've been through in your life? Entrepreneurs are problem solvers. We are problem solvers. That's what we do. And so if you've overcome anything, that's a really big clue as to something that you can help others with and create a business around. Uh, Another great question to ask is what is a painful thing that you've been through that you were able to overcome and how did you overcome it? What was your process? What makes you different than anyone else on the planet? What are some of the things that make you stand out? Those are often at the core root of it as well. And then what is the number one thing people ask you for help with? I know for myself growing up, I was always making videos and I honestly thought it was something that everybody did. I was making <laughs> videos for my parents for their anniversaries and friends for their birthdays and making movies up. And I really thought it was a normal thing. And it was a blind spot for me. So it's not that surprising that my entire business now revolves around some facet of video. So it's often the things that you take for granted about yourself that are really where your most profitable Niche and business lie. Fire Nation, I want to go through a few of those things. What's the hardest thing you've been through in your life? Like, think about that story. What's the most painful thing? How did you overcome that? Like, the hero's journey. What makes you different? Like, I love that question. What's the one thing that people ask you for help with? And how, Sunny, how you put that is kind of like the curse of knowledge. It's kind of like, well, I have the knowledge. Doesn't everybody? Isn't everybody good at this thing? Like, of course, like we have this curse of knowledge, and it's just not true fire nation. So I love that question. And you're willing to talk about specifics. I think that's one reason why you've had such success in the online world. And you had a terrifying experience while you were on vacation and it literally transformed your business. Tell us more. Yeah, I hit massive burnout uh, a few years ago. And it was something that I had, I had so much shame around for a long time because I really felt like to be an entrepreneur, you had to be strong and you had to be independent. You had to do everything by yourself. And I realized that that really does come from a place of ego. And it's a lot of the times to do with seeing examples of what entrepreneurship looks like without having any context for what goes on behind the scenes. And you kind of look at these people who are on a pedestal and you think, oh, well, they're doing it on their own. And so for me, I actually went on vacation and it was the first time I had taken a vacation in my business in a very long time. And I had just started to build my team out and I had support. And so I thought I'm going to take some time off. And when I took that time off, I realized that I had all these underlying stressors and anxieties and things that were bubbling to the surface that I really hadn't dealt with because I was just so busy all the time with work that I wasn't paying attention to any of it. So it all kind of came to the surface. And on a typical Wednesday night, I was just about to go to bed and I just, I couldn't fall asleep. My mind was racing. My heart was racing and it got worse and worse and worse and very meta. I was lying in bed looking up and Googling what to do when you're having an anxiety attack because I kind of figured that was what was going on. And eventually it got so bad. It was like six hours later. It's the middle of the night. I ended up calling my mom (laughs) as you do and bless her. I have no idea how she woke up. She woke up, drove over to my apartment and walked in. And I really thought she was going to walk in and be like, oh, you're fine. You know, let's just take a deep breath, lie down. You're going to be fine. She walked in and my mom's a tough cookie. And the look on her face was terrifying because she looked freaked out and concerned and she was trying to cover it up. And she said, you know what? I think I'm just going to call the ambulance, um, just to make sure. And she calls the ambulance. And again, I think that the paramedics are going to come up and they're going to be like, Oh, you're fine. You're having a panic attack. 
they come up, they see me and they say, you're having all of the symptoms of a stroke. I'm 29 years old at this point. You're having all of the symptoms of a stroke. I'm going to give you these baby aspirin and we're going to rush you to the hospital. So they rush me to the hospital and I'm looking around my surroundings and there are people who are keeled over from overdoses. There are people dying of cancer and there's me at 29 years old, totally healthy otherwise, having all of the symptoms of a stroke. So they rushed me and did all of the tests, did all the examinations. And they said, you're just having a massive, massive panic attack, massive anxiety attack. And it hasn't happened since, but it truly was the turning point in my business where I had to take a step back and realize that the way I had been operating was not healthy. And also, in addition to that, it wasn't scalable. I couldn't go on being everything to everyone and customizing my services and what I was doing to every single person who wanted to work with me. It was like I still was in that very beginner stage entrepreneur mindset of just take what you can get instead of realizing that I had the experience and the knowledge that I could be more picky in who I wanted to work with and also more specific in who I wanted to work with and creating that specificity. And I always saying niching down to blow up, it allows you to create freedom. And so I, from that moment forward, really dove into how can I make this more of a freedom based business and a business that works for me and not against me. And I believe that's why I've been able to turn the corner in such a big way. I've never had an experience like that since. I've really sort of kept my energy in check. And I've created this business model that from that day, we've doubled our revenue consistently every single year. And we've done eight figures in the last four years by packaging my expertise into scalable online programs. And Fire Nation, one thing I want to share is Sunny's still willing at this stage to be vulnerable, to be open, to be honest, to be transparent, to continue to share her story through this journey, to continue to be relatable on such an amazing level. And if you think Sunny's even close to being done dropping value bombs, Fire Nation, you have another think coming. <laughs> we have some awesome things coming up as well. Something we teased earlier about how to do more by doing less as soon as we get back from thinking our sponsors. As entrepreneurs, we have unique expertise and goals, but one thing that we share in common is a desire to shape our business the way we want. And if you've ever thought about online courses, let me tell you from experience, they need to work for your business. Introducing the Thinkific App Store, the first app store for course creators that lets you build your courses your way. If you're looking for an easy to set up platform that's built for entrepreneurs, that gives you the ability to create an online course that will look and feel like part of your brand, and that gives you an experience where you can pick and choose the right apps for you and your business as you scale, then look no further than the Thinkific app store. The course creation options are nearly limitless. Create certificates, coupons, live lessons, private courses, and more. In Fire Nation, you're invited to try it out for free for 30 days right now. Visit thinkific.com slash fire free to sign up and get started on your online course today. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-F-I-C dot com slash fire free free. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Fire Nation, meet Clay Clark. Clay has been coaching businesses just like yours since 2006. Yep, even through the Great Recession. And he does it for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee. At a time when Inc. Magazine reports that by default, 96% of businesses will fail within 10 years, Clay is helping businesses like yours to grow on average by 104% annually. Annually. How's this even possible? Clay only takes on 160 clients, so he personally designs your business plan. Plus, Clay's team helps you execute that plan with access to graphic designers, Google certified search engine optimizers, web developers, online ad managers, videographers, workflow mappers, and accounting coaches. Visit thrivetimeshow.com slash fire to see thousands of video testimonials from real people just like you who Clay has helped over the years. That's right. Do your research and view thousands, not hundreds, of proven, documented, and archived video testimonials from real people just like you at thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Then schedule your free consultation with Clay himself to see how he and his team can help you thrive. Sonny, we're back and you somehow do more by doing less. How is this even possible? I am a big believer ever since I did go through that burnout. Uh, it forced me to audit and really pay close attention to what I was doing and more importantly, 
why I was doing it. I think as entrepreneurs, we have a tendency to believe that being busy makes us worthy or that being busy makes us more successful. And I really started studying some of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world and their habits and how they operated. And what I learned was, no, no, they're not doing everything. They're focused on the one thing generally that is in their genius zone. And so I started to identify, okay, what are the things that I'm best at that nobody else can do for me? And that is creating the content for our programs and creating content, obviously, to promote it. So marketing and building relationships. That's what I am best at and not something that I can have someone else do for me. So basically everything else, I started to get off of my plates or stop doing altogether. So I was either outsourcing it or I was, I was not doing it at all. And I think it comes back to something I call my three A's and I live by this and I do this every single week and on a monthly basis as well. I do an audit and I go, okay, what can I ax? Meaning, is this entirely necessary? Do I actually need to be doing this or am I just doing this to fill my calendar and to feel like I'm successful and busy? So what can I ax? What can I ask for help with, which is huge for me because I used to hate asking for help. So what can I ask for help with? And then what can I automate? Because there's so many things in your life you can automate. One little thing for me that was a game changer was I am not the best cook in the world, nor do I enjoy (laughs) it. (laughs) So I was like, you know what? Maybe it's best that I have a food delivery service. And that freed up so much time. So I think really paying close attention to the activities that you're doing and is there benefit to them or are you just doing them to do them? Fire Nation, I love these three A's. What can I ask? What can I ask for help with? What can I automate? I mean, I'm the exact same way. If Kate didn't love to cook, then I would so have food delivery to my door <laughs> literally probably every day. I would just be like, just yes. bring it seven days a week, you know, send somebody in, do my laundry. Like, let's just automate things so that all of my bandwidth, all of my mental bandwidth can go to the things that only I can do and that only I want to do. I know that nobody mm-hmm. can work out for me, so I'm going to hit the gym hard. You know, I know that nobody, you know, can do these podcast episodes for me, so I'm going to hit the interviews hard. But all the other things that I could potentially automate or I could potentially hire out, like I'm going to do those things so I can be the best version of myself for the things that I can and need and want to do. And so let's talk about some secrets because you got some secrets, Sonny, and I'm not talking about like hidden (laughs) secrets. I'm talking about secrets to successfully sharing your story on YouTube. If Fire Nation is listening, they're like, I get it. I understand this process, but what are some secrets to actually sharing their story? Yeah. I mean, I think it really does go back to those questions that I mentioned earlier as prompts for you to start writing down some of the things that you've learned for yourself and some of the biggest changes that you've gone through in your life or maybe in your business and identifying what are key things that you've been able to accomplish or overcome. I like to think of it as, and this is what I call it, a mastered that list. So you basically brain dump everything that you've been able to do or accomplish or master And start identifying the key themes there. And those key themes can start building out entire content pillars for social media. And you can turn those into videos for YouTube. You can turn it into written posts on Instagram. You can turn it into podcast episodes. So really going back to those questions and just the general idea of what is a problem you've solved for yourself or someone else, an obstacle you've overcome, a skill you've mastered, career experience or um, life experience, and then what's your own zero to hero journey? That is where your best content comes from because it's unique to you. I want to give a really quick example of one of the situations where I was talking to an entrepreneur who was so external focused, he had lost complete sight of what he was here to teach. So he was a very fit guy and you could see just aesthetically, I was like, wow, you're in great shape. (laughs) And he's a personal trainer and he wanted to create a program around personal training. And I said, who's your ideal customer or client? And he said, pregnant moms. (laughs) I had to laugh and I said, why? He said, well, I saw this other woman create a business around serving pregnant moms and how to get healthier and more fit. And I thought that was a great idea. And I said, but what's your story? And he said, well, I, you know, I had a drug addiction and I was at my rock bottom and I discovered fitness and it was what got me through and saved my life. And I said, that's your story. 
that I don't know if, if pregnant moms are your ideal client or if you're really looking for more of people who are a mirror for you and have maybe gone through something difficult and are using fitness as the outlet to overcome and be the healthiest version of themselves. And once he kind of turned the corner on that, he realized, oh, that's that's my client. That's my niche. So I think when you're looking at YouTube specifically, it's really not as complicated as people might think it is. At the end of the day, there's what I call a flywheel on YouTube, and it's like a business as well. The more you understand the four key components, the faster the flywheel starts to move and the more that it starts to grow on its own. So you really have to understand who's your ideal viewer first and foremost. And generally that person is going to mirror a lot of the things you've been through and the things that you've wanted to learn that now you're able to teach. You have to create relevant content for them. So that content needs to be discoverable through the search engines uh, on YouTube because YouTube is a search engine at the end of the day. That's the key functionality of it. But also once you start building an audience through search and people are finding you through specific topics and keywords that are relevant to them, then YouTube starts to use the algorithm, which is the third piece of this, to categorize your channel. And once it knows how to categorize your channel, it knows how to leverage the other traffic sources in YouTube to attract more viewers, more ideal viewers. So it's using browse features, it's using suggested videos to help you dominate in your space and to reach more of those ideal viewers, which creates even more of an audience for your relevant content, which creates more algorithm categorization, which creates, again, just more of a push through the traffic sources to create more viewers. That's really how you grow. So the content has to be relevant to who you're trying to reach. And the really easy way to figure that out is, what are you interested in? And what do you wish was out there? And what kind of content are you constantly searching for? What podcasts are you listening to? What books are you listening or listening to or reading? And what do you want to teach the world? If you could talk about one thing for the rest of your life, what is that thing? The real formula for success on YouTube comes down to relevancy plus intent plus you. And I think that's what people forget. They think they need to be somebody else or copy the video style of some big influencer on the platform. But YouTube is like a big, huge ocean. And if you don't know who you're trying to attract or what you're there for, and why you're making your content, you're going to sink to the bottom of the sea because there's so much content being uploaded to YouTube every day. And if you don't have an audience to begin with, you're not going to be able to grow by trying to jump in the deep end and creating these broad video topics or just motivational video topics. You have to start with knowing who your viewer is and creating relevant content to that viewer. And that starts to get the engine going and start to build the momentum to grow your channel faster. Relevancy plus intent plus you, Fire Nation. Not some weak pale imitation of somebody else, you. Now, Sonny, I'm not afraid of hard work, but at the same time, I would like to hear some realistic ways to increase our subscribers in a meaningful way. I will say this because I've worked with thousands of people now, almost 10,000 in growing their presence on YouTube. And your first 100 subscribers Everybody will tell you this. Your first 100 subscribers are the hardest <laughs> to get. After 100, it starts to get easier and easier and easier. And it goes back to that flywheel concept I was just explaining because when you understand who you're trying to reach and the algorithm starts to pick up on that, it starts to help your channel by distributing it to traffic sources. So in the beginning, to start gaining your subscribers, one of my best tactics and something that I did in the beginning is spending 20 minutes a day looking up a topic or a keyword, just type it into search on YouTube and go to every new video on that topic and go to every channel that's top talking about that topic and get into the comment section and leave thoughtful, relevant comments because those comments can get pinned. I have a client that I work with who has a channel with about a hundred subscribers. And she commented on another channel that has the exact audience that she's trying to build. And that channel has 1.6 million. And she left this really thoughtful, really valuable comment under one of his videos. And her comment got pinned. And she gained 10 subscribers an hour for the next couple of days. And it started to build this really relevant audience to her channel. So then her, her content was getting more momentum every time she pushed it out. So community is everything on YouTube and community building is the best way to start growing a really relevant audience that your audience is actually interested in what you're sharing on YouTube and they're going to engage with it, which is going to push it further to more eyeballs and more relevant viewers in the algorithm. So spend 20 minutes a day 
looking up any topic that is highly relevant to your audience and commenting on any of the new pieces of content, engaging with the other commenters, following people on social media who are commenting on those videos, building this universe basically, and this ecosystem around you on all of your platforms of, again, I'm going to say the word one more time, (laughs) highly relevant audience members and viewers. And Fire Nation, if you're going to do all this hard work, you still need to remember at the core, your content has to be really, really, really good because at the end of the day, you can do all the right things and you can have your comment pins and then those people are going to go check out your channel. But if your channel kind of stinks, it kind of sucks. I mean, they're not going to stay. They're not going to subscribe. They're not going to, you know, add to that flywheel effect. So I always tell people, hone your skills. Like people are like, John, how do I grow my podcast? I'm like, well, become a better podcaster. Like that's one <laughs> huge way to help. And, and I'm being genuine with them too. I'm like, listen, I'm rooting for you. But right now, if someone goes and listens to your podcast with all this hard work you're doing and like advertising and all doing all these things, and they're like, ew, this is bad audio quality. This is choppy. This is this and that. They're not going to stay. So hone your skills, put in the reps. I mean, Sonny, you have something like, I think like 358 videos. I mean, you are putting in the reps. I have over 3,000 podcast episodes, Fire Nation. I am putting in the reps. If you love this thing, if it's you, you should be as well. And you've been able to do so well. And what you do, Sonny, is that you've been able to level up your generosity. So talk to us about how you've been able to use your success to give back. Yeah, this has been something that I I really do believe. And I've, I've thought this way for a long time. One of my first mentors said this to me, um, generosity equals abundance. And I really, truly believe that. And it's actually how I built the beginning of my business. I started putting out free content with truthfully no real intent behind it other than I had a bunch of clients because I had a little agency and those clients were always asking the same questions. And so I thought, okay, how can I help all these clients without having to go to individual meetings or getting on the phone. So I started making YouTube videos answering their questions and I had no intention of building a brand, but because YouTube is a search engine, I was starting to get discovered and all of these thousands of views and then it racked into the millions of views in that first year and I had all this demand. And so I truly do believe that what you give is ultimately what you get. And it's not what the expectation to get, but it naturally will happen. And so in the beginning of my business, a lot of free content to kind of build my reputation and my credibility. And now as I've you know been able to scale the business and create more impact and more income, what fuels me most is, I guess the best way to put it, and I've heard this from other people, is send the elevator back down. And so that's what I've been trying to do particularly in the last year. And we started this new initiative that we're calling our hero um, stories and hero videos. And we've identified people who have overcome some pretty serious things in their lives. And we've found unique ways to give back to them. So one woman, uh, she overcame cancer. She's diagnosed with cancer and nearly died. And she overcame cancer and she desperately wanted to publish a book. And she actually started writing the book when she was going through treatment. And it was the light within all of that darkness for her. And it's a book of poetry. And so her big dream was to meet the CEO of Indigo Books, which is one of the biggest bookstores here in Canada. So we arranged this quote unquote interview with her, which was really a ruse uh, to get her in the door. And I told her I just wanted wanted to hear more about her story, sat down for the interview. And then I surprised her and said, you're actually going to meet the CEO of Indigo via FaceTime. Um, We've set up an email list for you and our viewers are going to subscribe. So they'll be the first buyers for your book. And we're also going to give you a check for $10,000 because that can go towards this business that she wants to start with her book, but also she was unable to have kids after her um, surgeries from cancer and she was she had to spend ten thousand dollars on um, freezing her eggs and so we were like that's a great way to be able to get back to her and then the last one that we did recently was a big undertaking and it's still ongoing part two part two videos coming out soon but uh this woman lost her husband when she was pregnant with her second child uh, very early on and very tragically and their dream was always to have an airbnb slash home that was a school bus. So we then decided, okay, you know what we're going to do is we're going to help her convert this school bus into a real home and into an actual Airbnb business. So she can generate income as well for her and her two very young kids. And the crazy part about that one is we did this surprise and it surprised her so much that an 
I think it was two hours after we surprised her, she ended up giving birth um, to her second wow. child. So <laughs> it's it was a pretty, it was one of the most intense experiences of my life. But yeah, I, I believe that when you start to reach the goals that you've set out for yourself in your life, the most beautiful way, way to give back is to be able to identify people who are maybe at the beginning. And I've had so many mentors and wonderful people come into my life that have helped me get to where I am today that I believe it's my responsibility to do the same for others. Fire Nation, I love being generous in the moment. Like this is what Sunny's talking about here. It's not like waiting till the end of our ride here on life and then saying, okay, I'm just going to like dedicate and donate all this money away. It's like, why not do it now? Like, why not be able to experience it in person? Like when Kate and I have donated hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars at Pencils of Promise and been able to go to places like Guatemala to see these schools that our funds have literally built, to see the look on the kids' eyes that they get to go to this school now where they know they didn't previously have access to any education within 150 miles from where they lived, like to see the look on the parents' faces and the teachers now that have jobs there and they're going to be doing this. Like it's absolutely unbelievable. And when you can have that personal experience, I mean, it just makes you actually want to go back and be like, I want to make more money. I mean, frankly, it's one of the reasons why I moved to Puerto Rico because I'm like, I don't want to give half my money to the government. I want to give half my money to philanthropy, to causes that I believe in, to make real changes. And like, that's something that I love as well. So I love that we ended on that note, Sonny. So give us the one key takeaway from this entire audio masterclass that you want to make sure Fire Nation really gets then tell us how we can connect with you and all the awesome things that you have going on, any call to action or gift you have for Fire Nation, and then we'll say goodbye. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest takeaway here is I know that social media, oftentimes we think about it in this terms of, in the terms of width, and we don't look at it in terms of depth, but truthfully, the growth and the audience and all of the things that you're trying to acquire from being on social media, it doesn't come from virality. It comes from value. And it comes from really knowing who it is that you're trying to reach. And every algorithm works the same way. When you know the ideal avatar of your follower or your viewer or your client, the algorithm knows how to find more people like that. But when you're not specific about it and you go broad, you're just going to get lost in the sea. So relevancy is absolutely everything. Intent, relevancy, and you. And that's really the basics for every platform and really truly your business as well, knowing who you're serving and how you can best serve them and show up for them. So I'm very excited <laughs> because I've worked with so many people at this point and I really do believe and I know for a fact that if you have a story, you have a course idea and you have probably three to five within you right now. Most people that I work with when we start going through the process of uncovering their signature course or the signature program is they discover they have several ideas and we're going to help you pick the best one with a free 40 minute masterclass that I've created to take that story and take that experience and turn it into an actual business. So this isn't something that has only worked for a specific group of people or just business coaches. We've helped people who are bakers, accountants, feng shui designers, relationship experts, dancers, like I mentioned earlier, and everything in between build their businesses from the ground up using course creation and YouTube. So the strategies I share in the masterclass, they help people execute and start generating cash flow in less than six weeks. And it's been viewed by over 80,000 people and helped them develop their course ideas. And if you're someone who's been racked your brain, trying to figure out the online business you want to start, I encourage you to check it out today because it's the difference between not knowing what you want to do and kind of staying stuck and having a great business within the next six weeks. So you can get it at workwithsunny.com. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with SL and JLD today, so keep up that heat. And one of my biggest takeaways from this episode, which I loved, was it doesn't come from virality. It comes from from value. So please remember that and head over to eofire.com, type Sunny, S-U-N-N-Y in the search bar. Her show notes page will pop up with everything we talked about here today. Best show notes in the biz, timestamps, links galore. And Sunny, thank you for sharing your truth, your knowledge with Fire Nation today. One more time, give us that URL, that call to action. Workwithsunny.com. Workwithsunny.com. Sunny, thank you once again for that. We salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you. Hey, Fire Nation, today's value bomb content was brought to you by Sunny. And 
One thing that I've identified over the years, successful entrepreneurs, they are productive, they're disciplined, and they're focused, which is why I created the Mastery Journal. It is a gorgeous faux leather journal that will ensure that you master those three things, productivity, discipline, and focus. In 100 days, it is fantastic. Visit themasteryjournal.com. Use promo code podcast for a $15 discount as a thank you for listening to my podcast. And I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Schedule your free consultation today with Clay Clark, a former Small Business Administration Entrepreneur of the Year at thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Your expertise is unique and your online courses should be too. So build it your way with Thinkific. Introducing the first app store for online course creators on Thinkific. Sign up for your free trial of Thinkific at thinkific.com slash fire free. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-F-I-C dot com slash fire free.